Tradition tells us that Yom Kippur represents the time when God is closing the account books for the year. We focus on God during this precious season of prayer. Our first service is Kol Nidre. It's named for the prayer that is chanted on the evening prior, Erev Yom Kippur, the evening preceding that, that day of the festival. And then there is Shacharit, the morning service, this service is similar to the morning service of other festivals. The scriptures are read. There's a Haftorah section from Isaiah chapter 57 and chapter 58. The Torah reading details the, the temple service. Uh, Musaf, the additional service. This holiday has several interesting alterations to a standard Musaf service. It is in this section that the scapegoat, Azazel, and the martyrology are discussed. Both sections convey a notion of atonement for sins via the sacrifice of another. The martyrology describes the various Talmudic sages who were killed. Mincha, the afternoon service, is the shortest of the day. Ni'ilah, this unique concluding service, symbolically closes the gates of heaven. It reminds all hearers that the time is short. There's a clear sense of urgency associated with the Elah, and some people stand throughout the entire service. The ark is often left open. Observant Jews want God to hear their prayers as the service draws to a climactic conclusion and ends with the powerful final blast of the shofar, the ram's horn. It is written, the shofar, which is the central symbol of the high holy days, marks the definitive end to the day and to the whole period. It evokes the feeling of a successful passage from sin to repentance, from death to life. Some commentators say it is blown as a reminder of the great shofar blast of the Jubilee year. 